Why, hello there everyone, I'm Laxo, aka the Kumo Sensei, and uh, today is not really good news, because as you can see, this is my Zenistus Imanus, also known as the Colombian Lesser Back Tarantula, and it had a bad molt. And I told you last week that I was excited for a molt, and it was supposed to be for this Tarantula, but this molt is a pretty bad molt. As you can see, the abdomen looks pretty uh, strange. It looks like it has a piece of stuck shed on it, but there's none at all because I double checked the molt and one of the legs is twisted, which is not a good thing. Typically, there's not much of an explanation when it comes to bad molts. Some people say that it's relative to humidity, which that's a that's more of a snake reptile thing, but it doesn't really apply for tarantulas. Tarantulas are pretty durable in terms of molting, but in this case, it was just a case of a bad molt. So it's a case to case scenario and I honestly hope that it eats because as long as it eats it has a fighting chance but we'll have to wait and see. So now let's try to steer away from the bad news and let's look at some good news. Unexpectedly my Theraphosa blondie actually molted. This is the Goliath bird eater and this is the true Goliath bird eater. This is not the Theraphosa stermi which is the most common one sold. And this species here is actually one of the few species I actually want to produce in the hobby, but I cannot find any males. For some reason, males of the species is pretty much very, very hard to come by. But anyhow though, now I'm measuring the molt, and as you can see, the diagonal leg span comes out at 7.5 inches or 19 centimeters. So it's a decent sized female, and she's actually a mature female now, even though she doesn't look much bigger to me. She's a bit more thick, and she is ready for breeding, but I cannot find a male, so uh, I'm stuck with two females and no males for this species. But in the future, though, I will get that. I will get that male. Just, <laughs> just wait and see. Now this molt here is my Zenesis Imanus, the tarantula with a really bad molt that I just showed you, and I observed this molt inside out for like the next hour or two. Uh, yeah, and it molts out perfectly. The molt is actually really good, but the tarantula itself is really, really, really not in the best shape. And uh, yeah, I measured her molt and diagonal X man, and she's a little bit over six inches or a little over 15 centimeters. This female is now a breedable size, but I don't have any plans to breed her because of this bad molt. So what I'm going to do is to make sure that she's okay and see what happens from here on out. As long as she eats, there's actually hope that she'll make it. But as of now, uh, she's still kind of fresh and I'm observing her every single day to see how she acts. And as long as she acts normal, then there's hope. Now here's a size comparison to my hand. And my hand is a little over seven inches or about 18 centimeters, a little over that. And if you're wondering, that's not mold. <laughs> okay, just to clarify. The white stuff on the Theraphosa molt is actually its urticating hairs. Larger Theraphosas tend to make molting mats using the urticating hairs, which is fuzz-like when they make their molt mats. So what you're seeing on the Theraphosa molt with the fuzz is normal for it. And uh, yeah, as you can see, this entire stack here is my molts I get weekly. And yes, I do get a lot of weekly molts, but I don't really update on tarantula molts because most of the time I get so many molts that I just don't really uh, keep count or update on it. I just, I'm just like, yeah, I just stack them. <laughs> but anyhow though, this pretty much sums up the video. I'm Laxo, aka the Kumo Sensei. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe. And uh, yeah, with that, stay lax and Laxo out from the Kumo Sensei.